Well, I'm Larry Brushaver, and we've been uh, residents of Westchester since 1975. Okay. And what brought you here to Westchester or Union Township then, Larry? At the time, we owned a business uh, in Dayton, and later we opened a business in Columbus, and uh, our headquarters was in Montgomery, so this was a kind of a convenient place, and we were drawn to it also by the school system, figured that would uh, be a good place for our kids. Yeah. Did you, what did Westchester look like in the 70s? Well, uh, there wasn't a traffic light in in the area when we moved in. And uh, as I recall, the first traffic light was at Tylersville and Kingsgate Way, but not at the interchanges, either Cincinnati, Dayton, or Tylersville. There was no traffic lights. Uh, that's how uh, kind of semi-rural we were here. And how much, I mean, I imagine you just saw tons of farmland when you were here. It's, Correct, yeah, yeah. Lots, of, lots of acreage, and then lots of new housing developments were coming in, and they were moderately upscale developments, and uh, it, uh, you know, uh, there was some business, but not much. There was hardly a restaurant in, uh, in the area at the time. Uh, a Stuckey's at Interstate 75 and Tylersville, as I recall, and there were a couple of little bars that maybe sold sandwiches, but no other and not much other business, some light industry here and there, but not a lot. And uh, so it has uh, obviously changed just a little. A little bit. And you came here in the 70s because you wanted to live here with your family and raise your family here. But when did you get really involved in the community and, and how did you do that? Well, you know, it's a funny story because I really was busy raising kids and helping my wife raise kids and, and, and also uh, growing businesses. So, but I went to a, a coffee in the neighborhood in uh, around 1980, as I recall. And at the time, this uh, unknown person named John Boehner was running for township trustee. And uh, I was taken by him because he was a small business owner and uh, was really concerned about the community, and so we donated to that trustee race. I've been told by John several times that it was $100, uh, and uh, I remember at the time that was a lot of money to us, but I really was taken by him, and I thought, wow, you know, if he's act wanting to get active in the community, sounds good. So he won his trustee race, and then, uh, of course, went on to be state rep, and in uh, uh, a few years later became our... Uh, uh, House of Representatives member, and uh, so that hundred bucks cost me a lot of money over the years. But we remain friends, although we've had some spirited debates over the years. But uh, uh, and certainly he played a, a role in getting me involved, but uh, also played a key role later on in helping the community uh, greatly. So how do you, you went from you know kind of supporting. Uh, John Boehner in that trustee race, and then how did you kind of become active? Get ready. Well, yes, I was approached then in the late 80s. There were developments happening, uh, things with the trustees wanting to, uh, and as I recall that by that time, Dave Gully had come on as a township administrator, and they really were trying to put some uh, focus on the future. And so we, they wanted to form a vision committee and I was uh, one of the 20 members of that first 2020 committee in the late 80s, uh, starting to look at what do we want to be when we grow up. Let's set some goals and some uh, uh, timelines. And so uh, that started, and then, of course, that, was, that started a, a lot of other motions, things in motion. Um, we needed to get control of our own zoning and land use. And uh, because up to that point, it was all controlled by people in the county. So we uh, started uh, a local uh, zoning effort and uh, to get control and set up a land use planning committee, again, to look then, to kind of look at the vision and then look at how land uses would help benefit and help propel the vision. So that, uh, that turned out to be a uh, 
very important process, and that land use then is the foundation for zoning. So I was involved, and still am, in the land use uh, committee, and uh, which is to this day the foundation of our zoning. And uh, that, like the vision, has been updated several times over the past 30 plus years because we recognize that things are changing and we need to relook at, hey, how are they developing and are there areas that we need to uh, reassess? So, um, and then the next step of this progression, I, I equate this to being, to stepping in quicksand because at Little Vision Committee and giving John Boehner a little money has now caused all these other things that I became involved in, which I, I don't mind and enjoy, have enjoyed giving back. But then the next step was the uh, public-private partnership called the CIC, Community Improvement Corporation, which we formed in order to um, uh, help direct development and work with national firms as well as regional firms uh, in site selection and economic development uh, to help guide new uh, investors in the direction that our vision uh, laid out. So, uh, and of course then along the way in the late 90s we were able to get the interchange funded basically locally funded uh, private partners as well as uh, public um, to get that Union Center interchange uh, built. So that was another uh, step in the progression. And then CIC, you were involved in the Community Impor Improvement Corporation and then that came became the Westchester Development Council, correct? Yeah, it's one and the same. That okay. is correct and that is still very active today. Um, and uh, interacting again with uh, uh, site development experts from all over the country that we reach out to. We go to some, uh, some of the members of staff go to conventions to uh, introduce our, what we have to offer here. Um, and the interchange was an interesting uh, crossroads for us because one of the things in our vision committee that we laid out was we knew at the time we were, our revenue stream was heavily weighted, uh, heavy, a heavy weight on our residential population. And at the time, in the early 90s, we had a revenue stream that was made up probably 65% of the revenue was uh, residential and 35 was uh, commercial. We needed to flip that. We knew that healthy communities had a healthy, vibrant business. And I'm not talking about fast foods and gas stations. I'm talking about actual real employment places, <coughs> light industry that uh, is a good neighbor for our residential. And uh, we did, over the years, it, we have flipped that ratio so that Nobody likes taxes, but ours have remained relatively steady over the decades because businesses actually contribute more than they use in services. Residential uses more in services than they contribute. So that was a critical point also for us to be able to uh, fund our infrastructure and uh, to uh, keep this an attractive and inviting place for good residential uh, to be. Right. And the Union Center Boulevard interchange was huge for the community, right? It just right. opened up tons of land for development and some it gave some local control. But I think the project was so interesting because of its funding and how yeah. so we were able to do that locally. And we were we got ahead of the game we got ahead of the game because we had our land use and zoning already in place. And uh, hats off to another critical player in all this was Larry Schumacher and being able to 
be the spokesperson and the lead developer with Westchester 75, who owned most of the land around the interchange. And they were able to work with us to say no to a lot of early uh, would-be users. We did not, we knew we had one chance on this interchange to do it right. And the, uh, we didn't want it just filled with fast food and uh, truck stops or whatever, which is, if you go up and down the expressway for 100 miles, you'll see mostly that's what the interchanges are. We wanted one that drove employment and higher quality development. And because we had the public-private partnership, and uh, uh, so the, we were able to help drive that development in a beneficial way and get all the, the roadways uh, connected to the interchanges. Um, the Transportation Improvement District was another thing. We were very instrumental in helping get off the ground and it, it set a new pattern in the state of Ohio for how roadways, new roadways, and were developed and paid for. And uh, the, we had, of course, the regional highway was part of that. And, uh, but what a, a great asset that was for us to take advantage of. So, um, so just in general, what are you think are some of the just the biggest ways our community has changed. I mean, we could always, you point to more development and that kind of thing, but as a community and a group of residents and businesses, how do you, how do you think our community has changed over the year? Well, um, it's aging, and we have uh, some housing inventory that is uh, aging, and we're hopeful that, that uh, because we do have a lot of attractive reasons for people to be here that we'll see uh, reinvestment in our housing inventory and improvements in existing housing uh, as they get older. Um, we've seen this in other nearby communities where there's been uh, either a great redevelopment of houses, uh, existing houses, or actually tearing down houses and building new, more modern houses. So that's one of the things as we age uh, that I see happening. And we are, we are kind of building out our commercial land. There's a little left, um, but uh, uh, the good thing is as we see the, these projects coming on, they're, they're, uh, I think they're largely very positive for our community. They're not uh, polluting uh, their um, attractive buildings and their buildings, and for the most part, that'll be here for a long time. So uh, your family made the decision to move here all those years ago. Was that a good decision for your family, not in terms of your involvement, but raising your family here? Did you find that, that this was the right place for you to settle and to raise yes, your family? Yes, it, it was. In fact, uh, uh, very much so. In fact, uh, our four grandchildren, our two sons and their families lived nearby. Uh, here and uh, they're in the Lakota school system. All of our grandkids are, so it was uh, good enough for them, and it's good enough for uh, our sons and their wives, who are all they're now thinking of it. Our, my daughter-in-laws are both Lakota grads as well. So um, yeah, I'd say that uh, again, it was uh, actually it was a home run for us. We didn't know when we first came here that we would still be here all these years later. Um, but the community has come, everything has come to us. I mean, we have a, a high, high level hospital and medical care within a couple of minutes of the house. We have uh, <laughs> a lot more than just Stuckey's to eat. <laughs> In fact, I don't think Stuckey's exists anymore anywhere. But, uh, you know, we have food, entertainment, uh, medical care, uh, the world has come here, and it's so this has become one of the most convenient places to live. Uh, and uh, so I, yeah, and every I run back and forth to Columbus to our business up there usually once a week, and again, it's yeah, it was the right decision. Uh, didn't know it at the time, but uh, it was and has been. Okay, good deal. Anything else you can think of? Any stories you want to share? Anything? 
impactful? Well, I would say that again, I mentioned earlier that uh, Boehner played a role and Dave Gully, our uh, administrator for many years, uh, played a major role in helping us uh, secure parkland. Um, when I think about that marvel of Voice of America, and I tell people that story about how that occurred, and we, you know, between Boehner's pull in Washington and Gully going up and pounding on doors and sneaking into places to get signatures on documents that uh, uh, made the not only the interchange happen, but also to make Voice of America become that huge 500 plus acre park, which is just tremendous uh, to have that asset, and then also to have the other parkland that is secure now in the township. So we have, uh, uh, we have some veterans in that area to thank for, uh, but that, that to me is part of the miracle of Westchester. And then if you think of Weatherington back in the 80s, Tom Humes was told that he was out of his mind to make that kind of a, take that kind of a risky move in a place in an interchange that didn't even have traffic lights at the time in the early 80s when he made the commitment to do that Weatherington development. And uh, that again helped us set the bar uh, as to what kind of community we were aspiring to be. And uh, so it's, there's a lot of interesting little uh, twists and turns in our road, uh, but uh, it's Westchester's truly a gem and a miracle. There's uh, the way this has all come about.